Hello everyone, today's video is how I did this dog's nose in pastels. Now when I'm drawing noses, I 99% of the time will start off by blocking in the nostrils and putting in this line in the middle. Now the reason for that is if you get these in the wrong position, slightly too close together, too wide, you know, one higher than the other, you're going to change the shape of that dog's nose. So I always block in the nostrils first just to make sure that I've got that basic shape correct. The biggest thing when you're drawing noses is getting your lights and your darks in the right place. So if your nostrils are not correct, it's going to change the entire nose. In the two hour Patreon version, I do show you and explain each colour that I'm using, each pencil that I'm picking up. But for a nose of this colour, I will be using various blues, blacks, dark greys, light greys. There's some purples in here as well. Some sort of kaput mortem type colours. So there is a range because you do not want to have this flat. You need as many colours as you can, but not, you know, you still need to follow your reference. Don't just put colour where it's not needed. But quite often because noses are wet it's going to have a mixture and a variety of different tones and colour because it's going to be very reflective. Now quite often if your dog that you're drawing is sat against foliage or you know laying down near the grass they're going to have a lot of green in that nose as well so pay really close attention to your reference photo and that is telling you what colours to select but if colour selection is something you're struggling with then as I say I do mention the exact pencils that I'm using over on my Patreon channel. So at this stage, all I'm wanting to do is to get pastel down in the area, really getting my base layers accurate. And for me and how I work, I think this is a really important process. As you can see here, I am not just going in with one solid colour as my base layer. I'm paying really close attention to my reference photo and that is really, really important. One of the biggest things you want to be paying attention to when you are drawing noses is you want to capture that 3D effect, especially where the nostrils roll out to the outer edge of the nose. It's really important to get your lights and your darks in the right place and just by focusing on this is how you're going to create that realism and that extra bit of 3D. You don't want something like this to be flat and that's all in your lighting. Far more important than your colour. You know, this, this dog could be taken in a slightly different setting and the nose would be slightly different colours. So it's more focusing on where your highlights and your shadows are. Now, because I did make this a study and I just wanted to focus on this area, I have done this four inch square. So it's going to be a nice size for me to get a nice amount of detail. Um, that square, honestly, it, I did not realise it was doing that because I was busy drawing. But for some reason, the focus on my camera thought that that side of the nostril was someone's face. So I do apologise about that. It is something that I finally, when I realised that it was doing that, I did fix that. But that's just one of the settings on the camera. Technology the last few days has hated me, by the way. So yeah, what? just one more thing to add to that. So as you can see, it's all about a layering process. I'm working from my dark to light but I'm making sure that I'm paying really close attention to those differences in tone. I've gone ahead and I've added a dark blue, which I am going to be dulling down. Um, as you can see in the finished drawing on the top left corner there, the camera is making the drawing appear a little bit more blue than what it actually is. But you need to go darker in order to get your lighter layers to show up on top. If you're putting your lighter values on and you feel that they're not as punchy as you'd like, it's quite often because you don't have your layer underneath dark enough. So make that that much more darker and then you'll be able to have your highlight show up that much more on top. So you can see here just how many layers that I'm able to put down. Now the only reason that I'm able to do it this way is because of the paper that I'm using. The paper for me that I like to work on is pastel matte. They do a nice amount of colours but the most important thing is the amount of layers that you can add. I've never filled up the tooth of the paper to the point where I can't put layers on top. Now that being said, if you are using pastel matte and you are struggling to put your pastel, your pencil layers on top, quite often that is because the tooth of the paper has been filled too much. And that is often because soft pastel sticks or pan pastels have been applied directly to the paper with too much of a heavy hand. Because the pigment in those are much softer than the pencils, it gets into that tooth of that paper much quicker and fills that tooth and flattens out the surface. So quite often when that happens, you go and then put your pencil layers on top and they almost seem to just glide over. If that is something that is happening to you, I personally hate throwing artwork away because I do think you learn from every piece. So I would be tempted to apply a workable fixative to that, especially if you have got most of your base layers down. It'd be a shame to throw that away. 
So apply a workable fixative over the top and then you can then reapply your pencil layers on top for all those nice details. Now when it comes to adding these details here, you can only do that once you've got your base layers and the layers underneath it to the point that you're happy with. If you apply these detailed layers too soon, you're going to just end up covering them over with your, your layers on top. So just make sure that you're at that point where you can start adding this kind of detail. Because although you're not going to ruin anything, you're just going to be making more work for yourself. This nose study I got completely fixated on. I ended up spending far more time on it than I thought I was going to because I was enjoying it more than I thought. This is the first type of study like this that I have done because normally I just do my pet portraits but since launching my Patreon channel I wanted to make content there that complete beginners can start with and this would be a good one for that. Because it is all in real time and it is step by step it is very much something where you can just focus on one area and you can do this multiple times and each time you do it you'll be able to see an improvement with each attempt that you do so it's definitely a good one to start with. And over on Patreon I've provided the reference photo and the line art for this so that people can follow along right from the beginning. So you can see with this just how many different colours I've used. There's been blues, purples, some pinks in there as well and I've also gone in and used a green. Now I haven't been heavy handed with the green because I didn't want that to be too overpowering in this because this is just going to be a nose study. I wanted it to be, I made it more for how I wanted it I guess. So this is the green and it's, as you can see it's very very subtle. I haven't gone in with a heavy hand with that at all. Now you may have heard me know, mention on other videos that acrylics and pastels go hand in hand. The techniques are quite similar and like with that green if you just apply a really light hand with that pencil you can apply almost like a glaze how you would with acrylic and oil paints. So it's also how much pressure you put on that pencil. You can create different effects and that's exactly what I've done here. Now you could leave this nose at this stage because it looks perfectly fine to do so but spending that extra bit of time on it, getting it exactly how you want it and to be honest I could have spent another hour on this. And something to bear in mind if you are doing focus studies like this and as I say this is a four inch square you've got to remember that if you're doing a pet portrait and it's an A4 for instance and it's the whole dog's face you're not going to be able to get as much detail because the nose in relation to the dog's you know the size of the dog's head is going to be smaller. The only reason why I've been able to get this much detail here is because this is on a larger scale and it is just of the nose so just bear that in mind if you if you are going to be doing a pet portrait and you're thinking you can't get your nose as detailed as this, it's purely because I'm working on a larger scale. Now when you get to the stage of your portrait like this and you're trying to add all these fine details, the biggest thing to remember is to try and keep your pencils as sharp as you can. Now the Caran d'Ache and the Derwent are going to be harder to keep a sharper point because they are a soft lead. The Carbofello and the Pit Pastel pencils are usually easier to maintain that sharp point. Now I don't like using pencil sharpeners because with pastel pencils they blunt really quickly and they are not cheap to replace the blades each time. So I mean quite often I was trying to replace them each week which is just not realistic. So what I now opt to do is I sharpen my pencils with a Stanley knife and then I use a piece of sandpaper to roll that pencil on the bit of sandpaper to get that point extra sharp. But when you are looking to apply all your details you're going to be able to get those fine details with a sharper pencil. Now with my soft tools I'm applying my soft pastel to just to get a rough base layer now. I'm just blocking in where my basic tones are. It's going to be darker at the bottom of her nose. Now being a Staffordshire Bull Terrier they don't you know, you know, typically have fur that goes right up to the bottom of the nose. It's quite often a skin area and then the fur starts you know, half an inch an inch lower than that. So that's also something to bear in mind depending on what breed you are drawing. Study your reference photo really, really closely. If I was to draw the fur too close to the nose, I'm not going to make it look like that dog. So just pay really close attention to these details. Now with this area, I knew that I wasn't going to go overly detailed. I just wanted to hint at the fur direction more than anything because I wanted the sole focus to be on the nose alone. But as I say, my intention initially was not to block in any of this at all. But when I realised that I wanted to hang this on my wall, I wanted to just make sure that I finished it off properly. So that's why I'm going ahead now and adding the fur around it. But I don't want to make these areas too detailed because I don't want to draw that attention away from the nose. 
Now all I'm doing at this stage is using my pencils to refine my base layers. I'm not trying to get any kind of detail at all at this stage. I'm just mapping in where my basic differences in lights and darks are so that I can then get these layers dark enough so that I can overlap the fur on top. And also look at how much of a difference it's made just blocking in this colour around it. It automatically makes that nose look far more 3D. I think before I put this colour in I was looking at it thinking it looked, it just didn't look right. But it wasn't that, it was just because I was looking at the reference photo which had colour around it. And now that I've got all that blocked in it now looks far more normal, far more natural. So if you are looking to start off with pastels, I would probably recommend getting either the Carbofello or the Pit Pastel pencils. Now you don't have to get the whole set, you can buy them open stock, which means you can get them individually. But they are the two brands that are probably the ones that I recommend. The Derwent are also really good, but because they are a bit difficult to get a sharpened point, I think if you are just starting out with pastels, that can be a little bit more frustrating. So I'd either opt for Carbofello or the pit pastel pencils. My biggest thing I always say to beginners is get the good paper. That's where you should put, if you can afford to get pastel matte, then that is definitely what I recommend. The reason is if you buy a different, a cheaper paper because you are just, you know, experimenting or, or learning pastels, you will quite often think that why can't I get the same results? And you, you get frustrated because you think it's your skill or, or you can't do it right, you can't use pastels. But that is often, you know, almost never the case. It's because the paper's not allowing you to get those you know the, that end result that you're looking for so i would always recommend putting your money into the more expensive paper and then buying the pencils that you can afford around that so prioritize the paper because that will certainly make a difference to the end result that you will be able to achieve my primary medium before i learned to use pastels was color pencils and that was it can be a very frustrating medium because you cannot overlap and layer lights on top of your darks very easily at all. Whereas look what we're doing, you know, this is very different with pastels. You can so easily layer lights on top of darks, which is often, that's how fur is. If you look at something, the darker values are what's closest to the skin and the fur that gets lighter is closest to the viewer. So being able to actually replicate that, how it is in that reference photo, makes your, I think, me personally, I can get more realistic, you know, that softer looking fur with pastels than I can with colour pencil. So you can see that this study is exactly what I mentioned when I say that it's all about your lights and your darks, getting your contrast right. Another thing is you, quite often you don't have the nostrils dark enough. Now in something like this, the reference photo, these nostrils are really, really dark. So I went over the top of my this area with the black Rembrandt soft pastel stick. I don't use the pastels like that directly to the paper because as I mentioned before, it can fill the tooth. But just like what I've done there, I'm just reinforcing that darkest value that I can possibly get because I want this to be far more real, you know, 3D and that is all in your lights and your darks. If I did not have my nostrils or the highlight under the nostril as light or as dark as I needed it, this would be far more flatter and therefore not as realistic. So all I'm doing now is fine tuning all these details. I'm just making sure that I'm trying to get as close to my reference photo as I can. Now there are times where once you get to the, you know, you're 90% finished on your portrait, you can put that reference photo aside and you can make it more to your own. Like I say, I did not want anything overly green on this. So although the reference photo wasn't obviously green, if that is in your reference photo, but you don't want to include it, then you don't have to. Now, that being said, if you're doing a pet portrait and the owner has asked you to replicate that photo as it is, then you do need to get all those values correct. But for something like this, you can make it your own and use a bit of your artistic license to just fine tune it and make it exactly how you want it. You know, that's the good thing about doing portraits. We can actually improve on the reference photo that we've got in front of us. And here's for the most satisfying bit, taking off the tape, that nice straight edge. But there is the finished portrait, the little study. Um, like I say, if you do want to see the real-time two-hour version of this, that's available on my Patreon, which I will link below in the description. And again, as always, thank you for watching. If you could hit the like button, if it was of use, that would be very much appreciated. And if you want to get notified of future content, hit the subscribe and the bell button, and then you will get notified of any future videos that I upload. Thank you. Bye.